Russia's Krasuka electronic warfare system disrupts UAVs and radars in Ukraine. The Krasuka, a Russian manufactured electronic warfare system, plays a critical role in the Russian military's operations in Ukraine by targeting enemy radar systems from the ground. According to Army Recognition Media Outlet, this equipment is specifically designed to jam signals across a broad spectrum, focusing on disrupting airborne electronics such as those in unmanned aerial vehicles, radar guided missiles, and other airborne systems. It is noted that the operational strategy of the Krasuka involves long-range detection of aircraft radars ranging between 200 and 250 kilometers. The Russian-made Krasuka electronic warfare combat system consists of two vehicles including the 1L269, Krasuka 2 and the 1RL257, Krasuka 4. The Krasuka 2 system detects and recognizes enemy radar signals. The Krasuka 4 is a jamming station control vehicle that provides electronic countermeasures against enemy radar. Until the Krasuka is activated, the pilot can observe the surrounding environment and identify targets for destruction. However, once the system is enabled, the pilot loses awareness of this situation and therefore cannot complete the mission. Upon detecting a radar, the system identifies and prioritizes the target before deciding on the suppression method. The system identifies signal types and employs powerful intelligent jamming techniques to incapacitate enemy radar. This disruption prevents enemy aircraft from detecting targets or effectively deploying high-precision weapons. Consequently, enemy aircraft, compromised by the electronic warfare system, are compelled to leave the airspace and abort their missions. This system is capable of disrupting the radar systems of enemy strike and reconnaissance aircraft, UAVs and low-orbit satellites. Additionally, it can track NATO aircraft and engage ground radars. Army recognition media outlet says that since the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine, Russian forces have been actively using the Krasuka 4 to scan the airspace in defense of the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics. It plays a crucial role in identifying and classifying aerial targets, particularly in disabling the onboard radars of Ukrainian reconnaissance UAVs. Ukraine will destroy Vladimir Putin's most beloved bridge by mid-July. Ukrainian officials say they will destroy Vladimir Putin's most beloved bridge by mid-July, giving them roughly 100 days to pull off the near-impossible, according to The Sun. It is noted that for Putin, the 12-mile Kirsch Bridge, which he hailed a miracle upon its completion, is a visible symbol of his sham triumph in returning Crimea to its homeland. For Ukraine, it's a target number one, a grotesque display of 10 years of Russian occupation. Destroying it would be a major step in winning the war in the Black Sea by cutting off a major Russian military supply route and choking Putin's war machine. Brian Clark, senior fellow at the Hudson Institute and director of the Center for Defense Concepts and Technology, believes it is entirely possible Ukraine could do it, but it needs the right weapons. The most actively defended bridge in the world could be brought down with a multi-pronged Big Bang style air and sea attack, he told The Sun. The Speaker of the Naval Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Dmitry Pletenchuk, reacted to an article by The Sun. We have repeatedly spoken about this openly. Our president has spoken about this. This is an illegal extension to our Crimea. It must be destroyed. And one day you will once again see the news that you saw before, that the bridge is out of order. Question only what the extent of this damage will be. And of course, we will do everything possible to ensure that it is no longer there. Pletenchuk explained. He also told how the Russian Federation is now using the Crimean Bridge and how it is preparing for its destruction. Yes, for the Russians, it is perhaps even more of a symbolic character. They can no longer use it for military logistics after the damage received. There remains an energy branch on it that goes to Crimea. But basically, it is used by ordinary Russians who illegally visit Ukrainian Crimea. Therefore, it is a logical decision by the Russian leadership to build an alternative route for obvious reasons. He added, Drones crowding Ukrainian skies paralyze hostilities. They turn grey areas into death zones.
As the sky above the war zone in Ukraine are patrolled by countless drones hunting for any sign of movement, Ukrainian and Russian forces have little to no way to move across the battlefield without being spotted and killed. The Washington Post reported this. The Ukrainian military noted that the growing number of small drones in Ukraine has turned the area on both sides of the line of contact, commonly referred to as the grey zone, into a death zone. This means that those who dare to move day or night under the watchful eye of adversary drones are immediately killed. Journalists reported that the cheap drones deployed in Ukraine have transformed modern warfare and initially gave Ukrainian forces an advantage on the battlefield. However, the Russians swiftly caught on and commenced large-scale production of their own drones. Experts term the current stage of the war the Blitzkrieg drone warfare and admit that it is a stalemate, as if any person is out in the open, they are immediately hunted. But the saturation of drones, many with thermal cameras that work at night, has also shrunk the space where troops can move safely without being spotted, leading to high casualties and, in recent months, largely preventing either side from making major breakthroughs, the Washington Post said. Cheap drones deployed in Ukraine have transformed modern warfare and initially gave Ukrainian troops an advantage on the battlefield where they are perpetually outnumbered and outgunned. This is the evolution of our survival. Oleksandr Nastenko, commander of Code 9.2, a drone unit in Ukraine's 92nd Brigade, said. But the Russians quickly caught on and began mass producing their own drones. What followed was an overabundance of disposable deadly drones and electronic warfare devices known as jammers that disrupt their flights. Most common are first-person view or FPV drones, typically controlled by a pilot wearing a headset and holding a remote controller. The technological advances probably have saved lives because drone pilots can work slightly farther from the zero or contact line than traditional infantry. But the saturation of drones, many with thermal cameras that work at night, has also shrunk the space where troops can move safely without being spotted, leading to high casualties and, in recent months, largely preventing either side from making major breakthroughs.